Hi, my name is Paolo Fernandez, and I'm going to talk to you about SLA for AI. That is a service level agreement spec for APIs. There is a result from different discussions and conversations between practitioners in the industry in the last years. And it's currently a draft that has been proposed to the OpenAPI Technical Committee as an extension for OpenAPI uh, spec. Um, I would like in this presentation to answer the four more important questions. That is, what is exactly the SLA for AI? Why now is a very good time to propose such a spec? And how it benefits different stakeholders? And also, of course, if you're interested, we will see. We will see how to contribute and know more about the spec. And also, uh, I am very grateful to um, Rafael Bolbais from App9 and Paul Cray from API Metrics that are going to also uh, provide a couple of demos, small demos that leverage the SLA for AI spec and specifically service level objectives in a very practical scenario so you can see the interest and benefits to have these kind of aspects. So, well, what is exactly SLA for AI? Well, uh, you probably are familiar with, uh, with OpenAPI specification, the formerly known as Swagger. Um, this specification is uh, very widely used in RESTful APIs where you can um, define the different paths, and, uh, different operations, the data, the input data, the output data for, for each operation. And this aspect has been very, very successful because it allows you to um, uh, make use of uh, an ecosystem of uh, tools that uh, get this spec information to help developers and operators uh, from, from APIs. For example, I give here a couple of examples. Uh, one could be testing. There are tools that help to generate testing automatically based on the information that you can have in the open API spec. And also some scaffolding that is very interesting if you want to um, boost your development and you want to create uh, from zero to a first version that has the most basic um, uh, validations and um, different endpoints uh, configured for a REST API. These kind of scaffolding tools are very useful. Uh, and they are present in many different uh, ecosystems and language language frameworks. And uh, well, this open API spec is very interesting, uh, but there are uh, important issues in most APIs that are not present at all in this kind of a spec. Like for example, what about the rate limits? Or what about the average response time or expected availability? Or, and many other things that are uh, very important to know about this the, an, an API. Uh, so our idea uh, is to put all of these elements and, and the industry in many different industries. This kind of information are is known as service level agreement or part of the service level agreement information from a system to apply that to an API. And for example, we can specify things like rate limits or average response time or availability. And we believe that this kind of information, if we can uh, structurally put into a document, we could generate a new ecosystem or improve the ecosystem of tools uh, with very interesting possibilities. Like for example, we could do some SLA aware testing that not only provide use cases, but also can check if a given rate limit is uh, followed or not. Or for example, if you're cons consuming another API, you can uh, automatically configure a throttling for, for that API based on the on the rate that it, ha it has. And also if you're operating multiple APIs or you generate that, you have a API gateway, for example, the, this uh, configuration and deployment of these kind of tools could be uh, very automated if we have this kind of information um, in, a, in a specific structure format. So what is SLA in general? SLA, it's a very fuzzy uh, umbrella term for many different things. So what we did in the uh, interest group was to analyze the SLA from different 
a stakeholder's perspective, from the perspective of the consumer or the DevOps or the business or the tool makers. And we try to extract and see the, the real scenarios of all this information in real APIs. What are the most common elements and the most used elements in the different um, uh, scenarios in the real world? And with this time, still, these kind of uh, elements and vocabulary from SLA to pick the most basic ones and create the SLA for API as an aspect that satisfy this bare minimum set of elements that most of APIs in the market are facing. And if we can see in a specific example of this, that for example is from full contact, uh, is an, an API that provides information about um, contacts. Um, we can see that these kind of uh, elements are uh, very, uh, very complex. And, and, and this uh, kind of uh, information about the plans and SLAs is very important for both consumers and providers. But when you see it, these, these kind of elements like uh, rates, like uh, different overages or pricing, etc., uh, it is very um, challenging if we think how we can actually implement this into the API. If we could, if we want to create an API that follows this, and more importantly, we need to know that once we have implemented this API, is actually working and is is working exactly as it should, providing the specific service level to the different. Uh, customers that buy like free customer, the customer that has a free plan or a customer that has a starter plan, etc. And even uh, as it evolves, because this kind of uh, business model typically evolve and the business uh, layer of, of the organizations that want to uh, increase or, or change uh, the different uh, business parts uh, every um, every time and, and we have to as developers in the technical part we have to uh, take care of these changes and be sure that everything is in sync so uh, if we actually look at sla for ai it's a very very simple model where we have an sla as a set of plans and each plan has a pricing and availability and then a list of rates and quotas Every rate or every quota, it's specified in terms of a metric and is associated to a resource endpoint, uh, like a path in the in the Open API spec. And uh, it is uh, the idea is that you have the Open API spec and then you link uh, another document that is the one that shows the different plans in this in the format of SLA for AI. Let's see an example to, to uh, put this into a specific scenario. So uh, let's say that we have an open API spec for the, the typical one from the pet store where you have um, just different paths. So the idea would be inside of the info section of the open API spec, uh, we propose to add a, a link to the XSLA to the plans and these uh, plans uh, would have a very simple structure where we will have the contacts and infrastructure information, metrics, plans, and uh, the, for each plan, we will have pricing, quotas, and rates. Let's see a very simple example. For example, in this case, uh, if we have a get uh, operation over the pet path, we will have a quota that will... Um, uh, limit the request that you could do into a uh, into a, a, a pet path uh, by ten maximum of ten requests per hour. This would be the the example. As we can see, it's very simple to specify this kind of stuff. And also, we can have here another um, example of um, pro plan where we have a specific pricing and a rate over this, the same operation, get uh, over the path pets that specified that you're allowed 
uh, up to five requests per second. The difference between rates and quotas is the sliding window where you monitor the actual metric. So once we know uh, what's SLA for AI, why now? To answer this question, we can see that there's a very consolidated marketplace and the, this marketplace is growing with multiple APIs uh, currently available. We see that uh, as we can uh, find more and more APIs in our organization, the configuration management uh, could become a, a very serious problem and many uh, tools are trying to solve this problem, but sometimes the very specific elements of configuration are very ad hoc to a specific tool. So there's, uh, it is a problem when you change from one tool to another tool. And uh, there's a very, very important need for a precise way to specify runtime behavior. If you want to provide to your customers to if you have, if you're an API provider, you want to provide to your customers a very good experience. You need to precisely analyze how are you behaving. And finally, there's a very also important need to avoid security and availability problems nowadays. So let's see how this kind of uh, API spec could benefit to the different stakeholders. So from the perspective of API consumers, we see that this kind of spec could uh, allow uh, and boost an ecosystem of tool to improve accurate SLA plans documentation based on the spec. And also it could allow tools to, for example, auto adjust the consumption, like for example, the throttling that I mentioned before. And also there, it could open the opportunity to have a third party assurance or third party uh, organizations that could monitor or analyze to assure a, a, a specific service level uh, from the different APIs. Later, we will see a, a glimpse of that on one of the demos. Um, from the perspective of API DevOps, uh, we see that this kind of specs could be a very important help for service gateway configuration in the deployment and so on. And also in order to check, for example, if the current systems are uh, going to behave correctly and will provide their specific um, experience because we could leverage the typical testing with SLA and plants information. And also it could be very interesting to handle the evolution of configuration so you can review, roll back, etc. This kind of things could be more easily with this kind of uh, spec. From this, from the perspective of API businesses, this uh, spec could allow them to enforce limits uh, in a very precise way. Uh, also, it could uh, make them more uh, to improve the accountability and position around their monetization and also how to evolve this monetization and evolve the business model in an easier way so the technical layer is in sync. And uh, finally, from the perspective of uh, API tool makers, we believe that uh, the, these two, the tools that um, embrace this SLA from, for API, Open API it could um, provide more value to the customers uh, it could generate a much more customized uh, um, way of documenting in different environments. And also, um, it allows uh, the improvements in the gateway deployments for the different um, users. Um, all those benefits are just a, um, a glimpse of what we could think could be highly beneficial uh, if we could embrace this kind of uh, approach uh, like uh, the SLA for OpenAPI. Let's see uh, some a couple of demos uh, to show the importance of a service level agreements and service level objectives in real time. We will see two very different uh, demos. One is going to be a, more, a governance of um, the operation of uh, an API. Uh, of multiple APIs in the in a Kubernetes cluster, there is going to be 
uh, done by uh, Rafael Budbulweis. Thank you, Pablo, and thank you everyone for joining me today. I'm Rafael from App9, and today I'm going to talk to you about how I apply SLOs on real-time Kubernetes cluster traffic. So let's put the SLAs to work. Uh, first, we need to define the rules per service, per endpoint, maybe per the entire application. Second thing, we're going to apply those SLOs of the real-time traffic of your Kubernetes cluster. Three, we're going to understand exactly which endpoint is breaching which type of rule. So if it's a latency, a schema validation, etc. For that, I'm going to use Mizu. Mizu is a super simple open source tool. Think of like Kubernetes, uh, your Chrome DevTools for your Kubernetes cluster. Regardless if it's REST API, gRPC, Kafka, ActiveMQ, we'll see the traffic for that. And one of the features of Mizu is that it can show you, uh, it can allow you to do validations for the traffic. I'm going to show you how we're going to do that today. We'll focus on latency and the schema validations. Uh, in order to do that, we have the WebSock application. I'm going to show how I see the real-time traffic and then how I create and apply those validation. Some will be simple, some more a bit more complicated. And a hint, how you can get your APIs over time uh, using Uptime. Uh, so let's jump right to it. This is uh, uh, our demo application. This is WebSock. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just start Lisa. You can see that it already goes and get everything from my cluster. I can, of course, put some per namespace, regular expression, and et cetera, to pinpoint what exactly I want to see. Uh, and now I'm going to use uh, my browser to just browse the WeaveStock application. You can see that I see everything here, the front end, but not only the front end, because for that I have DevTools. But remember, DevTools for Kubernetes. Uh, I can actually see the behind the scene uh, Kubernetes services, so cluster, like catalog, I see the request, the response. Uh, let's do something cool. Let's do a bad login. So I'll go here. Let's do user and that, enter. And you can see I got not only the front end, so let's see, here we go. So the front end here, also behind the scene, the user that we got, so we got it here as well. Let's look at the response. I'm not authorized, 500. And I got the millisecond, the latency, and et cetera. So for that, let's go and apply some validations. Uh, I prepared a simple validation YAML. Uh, what I'm going to do is basically break the catalog service on the catalog path if the latency will be one millisecond. And the same thing I'm going to do for the front end, but this time it will be two milliseconds. And I disabled the card latency SLO because we're not going to use that during the demo. It's really nice that I can use the same path on different services. The reason I'm using a regular expression here is maybe I have multiple front ends and multiple catalogs and I want to apply those SLOs to all those parts. So we're going to save that and run Mizu tap with test rules this time. And again, Mizu is going to apply all these rules to my Kubernetes cluster. And now that is up and running, I can switch to my application. Let's do a quick homepage refresh. Here we go. It's starting to see the traffic. Now let's uh, go and have catalogs. Here we go. And we can see that we got some breaches here. We have like, for example, this one, all the rules were applied and they're good. We see that the front end two milliseconds, that's great, but what we have here, for example, let's look at that. Rules, oh, catalog has, was supposed to respond with one millisecond, but it was actually two milliseconds. That's a bar. We can actually do really complicated ones. Uh, we can go and validate the entire application. Uh, for example, here, you can see the entire application, 1,000 milliseconds. I can put a JSON schema validation that if there is an ID, it, it's value is holy. Uh, the price is a float. The content length of the header, the header content length is a number. Um, and with that, I can actually go and apply different types of validation for my Kubernetes traffic. Uh, with App9 using Mizu, I can actually go and get all the contracts and all the traffic over time. That way I can apply it to my uh, Swagger, just download the Swagger, get all those SLAs into the Swagger and apply them later on. Um, we'll be happy to get more info. If you want to get more info, use get, uh, getmizu.io. That's the Mizu website. Uh, you can take it from the repo or take it directly from the website. 
happy to contact me. Uh, my email is here, Twitter, or you can just scan this nice sparkle here and get all those links directly to you. Thank you again, Pablo, for inviting me and have a great day. Thank you, Rafael. The other demo is going to be uh, done by uh, Paul Cray, that is the head of machine learning and standards by API Metrics. And we will see how we can uh, analyze uh, public APIs. In particular, we will see a demonstration of how service level objectives in, could be analyzed and benchmarked uh, for a set of public APIs in the context of open banking in UK. Hello, I'm Paul Cray, Head of Machine Learning and Standard API Metrics. An API service level agreement should contain a number of service level objectives. SLOs can be arbitrarily complicated. Simpler ones include the overall availability and average latency of the various relevant endpoints in a given time period, such as a calendar month. An active API monitoring system can be used to measure the underlying metric associated with an SLO. The value associated with the metric can be determined from fundamental business or operational requirements or by benchmarking. The UK Open Banking System provides an excellent test bed for benchmarking SLOs as many banks expose endpoints that comply with the Open Banking Implementation Entity specification. It's thus possible to use the measured performance across a number of bands in a particular month to generate appropriate benchmarks for SLOs. This ensures that fair value for all the SLOs are available. We've implemented in Jupyter Notebooks some functionality that actually uh, calculates uh, SLOs. Which we can see here. So here is the code that we use for actually generating the SLOs. We used 800,717 API test call records to 26 UK open banking endpoints across 25 brands in January 2020 to calculate the benchmarks for the SLOs. These are then exported to a YAML file according to the SLA for Open API Initiative specification. And here we see the YAML file. At the top, we have some definitions of the metrics, and then uh, further down, we have for each of the um, 27 or so endpoints, we have uh, the actual SLO for, um, for, each, for each of the uh, uh, metrics um, specified. So there's quite a lot of data in this file, uh, which is why it's handy that we can automatically generate such a file. Um, this file could be placed under a version control in an appropriate repository. We can then ingest the YAML file back into uh, a notebook and extract the SLOs and calculate whether or not they've been um, met. And here's some code in the notebook that does that. Uh, and so we're able to calculate uh, whether or not um, each endpoint for each brand has been has met the uh, the SLO for uh the seven months of february through august uh, 2021 and then export those uh records into uh an excel spreadsheet which is here and we can see that uh for the barclay business uh brand there's a lot of endpoints and for each one of them we have for each month whether or not the um the uh, actual re recorded value of the metric uh, satisfied the uh, the actual target. So here, the target for technical failures was 0.2 percent, whereas the actual measured value was 0.9 percent. So that particular uh, SLO wasn't satisfied in in July for that particular endpoint. And in the summary table here, we can see that we've got 72 SLOs. Uh, each month, and we can see that on average about 50% of them have been satisfied. And this is benchmarks, of course, against all of the um, endpoints for each of the um, banks that are exposing that endpoint in January. So it gives a fair representation of, of performance um, 
across the actual um, uh, industry in terms of what can actually be achieved by uh, all of these APIs, which are actually uh, attempting to provide the, the same the same service in terms of what the APIs actually do. You could also uh, export uh, these results into a YAML file that could then be placed under uh, version control in the same way that could then be referenced uh, uh, conveniently. And that's something we want to look forward uh, to doing in the future uh, as an extension of the, of the actual specification. What we've demonstrated here is that we provided a proof of concept and it's straightforward to both generate SLO benchmarks from real data for friction APIs and to assess whether these be met in a given period. SLOs are essential in managing API quality and we would advocate using automated systems for SLO benchmarking and assessment as best practice in API management. Thank you for your attention today and I'll now hand you back to my colleague. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Well, where to go from now? If you're interested and would you like to know more information about the spec, uh, you can go to the GitHub repo where you can see uh, the whole spec and the different examples. If you want to evolve the spec with us and uh, it could be interesting to uh, add more elements to these SLAs, uh, you can join our interest group mail list. And finally, uh, if you want to, uh, if you think that this is a very interesting approach, we uh, will kindly ask you to leverage the spec with tool. There are multiple scenarios, multiple examples in gateway plugins, documentation, testing, monitoring, scaffolding, mocking. And we believe all those tools that are mentioned here could be in, improved uh, with the uh, SLA for AI information to automate and make more, give more value to their customers. Well, uh, that's all. Uh, we will now be open to um, answer some questions and will be with me, uh, both Paul and Rafael as well. Uh, thank you very much. And we're ready to answer.